What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I will be showcasing one of the most fun builds in Destiny. I've been rocking this setup off and on ever since D2 came out, and it's always a good time. It centers around the exotic Doomfang Pauldron, which are OGs having released with D2 Vanilla in the Red War campaign. They have the exotic intrinsic Horns of Doom. Defeating targets with void damage has a chance to grant an escalating bonus to damage with void weapons. Defeating targets with void melees grants super energy. While Sentinel Shield is active, defeating targets with melee attacks recharges Shield Throw, which extends your super on hitting a target. So these got a rework a little while ago where they give Escalating Void Weapon Damage Boost. This typically takes about 2-3 kills on red bars, but if you get a charge melee kill like a Shield Bash, then it will instantly go to x4 Weapon Surge. However, this does not work with a regular melee and overshield, so just be aware of that. And this escalating weapon damage bonus is very handy in Onslaught for taking out adds even quicker. This build was basically made for Onslaught, and a lot of the selections are tailored directly for Onslaught, which I will get to. So the other part of the exotic is what they've done for years. If you hit enemies with your shield while in your super, you will get super energy back. This can be extremely strong in the right add dense activities, and my friend Time Lord even soloed the Lake of Shadows GM and he was able to get some very long supers. And I've been using these in Onslaught and it's one of my favorite builds to run. Because when you're in your super, it's like a mini game within the game to try and extend your super as long as possible. There's a skill gap to it. You want to seek out the biggest cluster of enemies as you can to try and get the most shield hits so that you will get the most super energy back. I've had it where I've been able to keep a super up for basically two full waves of enemies. It's super fun and it's really strong as well. And it's especially effective if you're in a fire team with friends because you can just tell them to leave enemies up for you so they don't steal your kills. But even without comms, this build goes extremely hard. It isn't bad on high health targets either as you can keep hitting them with the shield throw to keep getting energy back, but it's definitely better for ad clear. And if you get a shield bash kill in your super, this gives you more shield throw energy. So you can throw your shield to get super energy back and then tag up some enemies, and then get a melee kill in your super and then you will have another shield to throw up more enemies. Like I said, there's a bit of a learning curve to get the maximum use out of the super, but it's so satisfying when the stars align and you get like a minute long super. So that's the exotic out of the way, but what about the rest of the build? Well, this is where it gets really fun. As I said, I've ran this build for years, and when Void 3.0 came out, I paired it with Bastion and Offensive Bulwark. So let's look at Offensive Bulwark first. It states, while you have an overshield or inside Ward of Dawn, your grenade charge is significantly faster, and you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend the duration of your overshield. And then you also gain an additional shield throw while in Sentinel Shield. So you get two throws instead of one. So as far as I'm concerned, this aspect is mandatory because two shield throws in your super helps it tremendously. The exact benefits it offers are on screen now thanks to the Destiny Data Compendium, and you can see we get a 400% increase to our grenade cooldown and we deal double melee damage. The double melee damage is very valuable as it allows you to secure a shield bash kill on red bar enemies even in the later stages of Legend Onslaught. And when we do, we get a x4 weapon surge, as well as a chunk of like 20% to our super. So yeah, this aspect is a must run. So in the past, I would pair it with Bastion to get an overshield on barricade cast, just so that we could take advantage of the benefits from offensive bulwark on command. But for Onslaught, controlled demolition is far better to run as your void abilities or volatile explosions make enemies volatile. And volatile is super strong in a horde mode like Onslaught where many enemies are stacked on top of each other. So then you can just explode big groups of adds, and when they explode, it heals you and nearby allies. So this gives us tremendous ad clear ability and is a very strong aspect all on its own. Much better than Bastion in my mind. And this also works with your super, which you're using a ton, so when you hit enemies with your shield throw or shield bash in super, they will become volatile. It's an excellent build. And one more thing I want to note on the super is you still can just throw up the banner shield, and allow your teammates to deal damage from behind that and it will give them a whopping 40% extra weapon damage. But here's where we get really creative. So we are losing out on the benefits of an overshield for offensive bulwark, right? Well, no, because I like to run this with the exotic Glaive Vex Caliber. It states blocking damage with your shield gradually bestows void overshield to yourself and nearby allies. 
And then it also has the perk Perpetual Loophole, where you deal additional Glaive melee damage while protected by an overshield. And if you defeat the enemy with a melee while you have an overshield, it refreshes the overshield to full health. So you can get an overshield from this Glaive basically on demand, and it has never been easier to get Glaive energy than it is now. You can just stand with it out in between waves and during biphases to get Glaive energy. And then you can just block to get the overshield, and then get a quick melee kill, and boom, you have full overshield, which gives big benefits to your grenade cooldown and shield bash damage. Unfortunately, we do not have unstoppable Glaive on the artifact, but Glaives are still really strong, especially for survivability. I've beaten a few Legend Onslaughts with a Glaive on, and they're great because you can just tank damage from enemies, which is really good for capping mines or baiting high health targets. I baited an unstop and then just let my teammates stun them and kill them, and it worked really well. So if we run Vex Calibre, then we get the benefits of Bastion without having to run the Aspect. For other weapons, I like a Chill Clip Riptide, as this can stun overloads with slow and freeze unstops so that she can stun them as well. Then in the heavy slot, I love my Edge Transit with Chain Reaction and Bait and Switch. Chain Reaction allows for great ad clear, and with Doomfang Pauldrons, if you clear like 8 enemies with a Void Weapon, then you will get Void Weapon Surge times 4. And then when high health targets come, you can just burst them down with Bait and Switch. And one more thing I want to note is that with Vex Calibre, Glaive Melees will not give you the Void Weapon Surge, but Glaive Projectile Kills will. And trust me, these weapons are all pretty ammo efficient, so ammo economy isn't much of a concern. So now that we know our aspects, what do we run for fragments? Well, you can go a number of ways here. I love running Echo of Reprisal where final blows while surrounded give you super energy, and then Doomfangs already give a lot of super energy, but this just cranks it up even more. Echo of Starvation is amazing as always, as this grants us Devour when we pick up an Orb of Power. This obviously helps us a ton in the survivability department because we get health back on kills, but it also gives us a lot of grenade energy so we can be spamming our grenades. And this applies Volatile from Controlled Demolition, so yeah, this is a super good fragment to run. Next we have Echo of Expulsion, where Void Ability Final Blows cause targets to explode. This just helps us trigger even more explosions in conjunction with Controlled Demolition, so it just allows for even more explosions. And then I like Echo of Exchange, where Melee Final Blows grant Grenade Energy. The Grenade Energy granted is based off the tier the combatant killed, but what is really nice in this build in particular is when I made my Void subclass school, I learned that this also works with Glaive Melees, so it's absolutely perfect for this build. Another fragment you could go with if you want is Echo of Vigilance for even more overshields, but I don't think it's necessary. So that is what I ran for fragments, but after thinking about what would be best, I think Echo of Undermining is probably worth the minus 20 to our Discipline stat, as it would allow our grenades to weaken enemies. I would probably trade it out with Echo of Expulsion. Expulsion does give plus 10 to Intellect, so we are losing 30 total stat points overall, but I think it's well worth it. You get a ton of supers regardless thanks to how the build is set up, so the passive cooldown is kinda just whatever. And having weakening grenades can be the difference between a wipe and a clear if you get a late round of Demolitionists. This is why I like build crafting. In certain scenarios, some things are better to run than others. Like in low tier content, I would probably leave Echo of Expulsion on because undermining is just overkill. But in high end content, I think you would want to switch those two fragments. Echo of Instability gives your weapons volatile rounds when you get a grenade kill, and this too could be worth running if you wanted. A lot of it just really comes down to your preference, your loadout, and the activity that you're running. Onto mods, we can crank up the super cooldown even further. We have Ashes to Assets and Hands On for more super energy with grenade and melee final blows. With this build, you basically want to be using your grenades and melees every time they're off cooldown. Doomfang Shield Bash gives tons of super energy and Hands On will give you even more. And the grenade regen is super fast thanks to Offensive Bulwark and Devour and Echo of Exchange all feeding us grenade energy. Hence why I think Echo of Undermining is the play even though I didn't have it on in my gameplay. I also use Scatter Grenades because they have a pretty short cooldown and they're really good for taking out a cluster of enemies as they spawn in. But Vortex Grenades are always good and Void Walls hit very hard. I just like the ease of use with Scatter Grenades as you can just chuck it out quickly and let it tag some enemies and they hit pretty hard. And lastly we have Harmonic Siphon which is Void Siphon in this case on the helmet for a way to make orbs which gives us our Devour proc from Echo of Starvation. On the gloves we have heavy handed of course to make an orb from a melee kill, and then momentum transfer for melee energy when we deal damage with a grenade, and impact induction for grenade energy when we deal damage with a melee. The chest piece, I do the rainbow of resistances. 
the legs, I like Invigoration and Innervation for Grenade and Melee Energy when we pick up an Orb. And then you can go Absolution for even more energy to all your abilities on Orb Pickup, or you can go with Void Surge for more weapon damage. I know that seems counterintuitive thanks to Doomfangs giving you damage for free, but in something like the boss room, if you have a Well of Radiance, you aren't going to want to kill adds to stack up for your Surges. You can just pick up the orbs that your teammate made from the well cast and then instantly deal more damage with your edge transit and melt the boss in the well. So I actually did this, but you can do whatever you want. And then on the class item, I have distribution to reduce all my cooldowns when I cast a barricade, outreach for more melee energy so we can proc doomfangs more and more, and 1-2 finisher so that if we get a finisher we will get melee energy back as long as we have armor charge. And then for stats, of course, 100 resilience, and then a nice balance between strength and discipline so you have good passive cooldowns for your shield bash and your grenade. And that is pretty much it for the build. Once you get the play loop down, you will just be deleting everything with your abilities in your glaive. You shouldn't die thanks to devour, and then when you have your super, that is usually good for like an entire wave of enemies. And when you are without your super, just make sure you're using your abilities like crazy and picking up orbs from your teammates, and before you know it, you'll have your super back and ready for the next wave. It's such a fun play loop, and I'm so glad I was able to make it work with Vex Calibur and not have to run the Aspect Bastion. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. And if you're still watching, then thanks for watching to the end. It means a lot. I really hope you try out this build, as not only is it a ton of fun in something like Onslaught, but it's also very strong and effective. Anyways, happy super spamming and take care.